Hi, I'm Claire of Argyle Archaeology and today I'm going to talk about the uh, watch and brief works we did at Logure, which is in Persia. So on this slide, um, which is a Google image, um, you can see that the new road now has actually gone in, but we were doing the watch brief on this new road that was constructed um, in advance of a new bearite um, mine going in, up in up in the forest beyond. Um, Logurate's located between the River Tamil here and the River Tay, and this is the uh, floodplain area here, and this is the first Logurate terrace, and then there's the second higher Logurate terrace here. So previous to our work, the terrace um, had already had a lot of known archaeology on it, mostly in the form of crop marks. You can see these crop marks are being um, rectified from aerial photographs by uh, Stroke Environment Scotland, and they're shown in red on this image. And the scheduled area of the crop marks is shown in this brown colour, so you can see quite a lot of the crop marks are out with the scheduled area. Our areas that we concentrated our archaeological work in is area one, shown in the purple, area two, which just runs up here, and the next to the small B road, and area three. And um, this area in here is actually a very steep scarp, so we didn't do any archaeological work on that area. Um, the areas were stripped under archaeological supervision, and at that point we could see the archaeology, so then we were given plenty of time to deal with the archaeology before the road was constructed. So what did we find? Well, the earliest feature we got on site was an early Bronze Age cremation. This was found in this pit or small post 214, um, which is right on the edge of the terrace just in here. And um, on excavation, you can see it's quite a small feature, full of charcoal and fragments of burnt bone. Um, and you can see here and here that the uh, burnt bone is um, human for one thing, but also it's incredibly um, eroded and degraded. The amount of burnt bone we got out of this pit um, equated to about 5% of a, of, a, of a body. We know it was an adult, um, but we really can't say that much more about it. Interestingly, the charcoal that we got out of this pit um, was quite mixed. And within that charcoal were burnt hazelnut shells and also a couple of um, carbonised cereal grains. So what it appears that we've got here is um, probably the redeposition of a part of a Bronze Age cremation that had been kicking around somewhere else um, for quite a considerable amount of time. And then for whatever reason was gathered up, or at least 5% of it was gathered up, lots of, it, lots, um, of skull fragments. Um, and incorporated within what appears to be sort of a domestic hearth waste and set in this small feature. Now, um, we'll have to ask why was this done? And you can see this is this is the, the actual pit um, under excavation. It's got magnificent views down over the, uh, the uh, floodplain, so where the Tay and Tamil um, come together. And I think one possibility is that people deliberately gathered up some ancestral bones and possibly um, placed it in a foundation deposit of a structure. Um, the other possibility is that this was a, some sort of um, redeposited burial and placed in a significant um, location in the landscape. Um, we cleared all this area with the machine and there was no sign of any other postals or any other features. So this is an isolated find, but whether it was actually part of a, a structure and that's subsequently been um, ploughed out, there's quite a strong possibility that may have happened because um, there's a huge amount of plough truncation on the site. Um, but nevertheless, it's actually quite a nice find. So next in the sequence of material we found was this late Bronze Age pit. Um, this is from area one, which is here, and this is uh, a plan of that area, and it's pit 12 here, and you can see the photograph of it here. The pit um, was full of um, split and firecrack pebbles. However, there was no evidence of in-situ burning, so it would appear that it's actually a rubbish pit, perhaps um, fire 
scrap pebbles were removed from various halves and it was just a way of disposing of their of their rubbish. Um, again, it's a bit like the early Bronze Age feature and it's, it's the only feature we have of this period from the works we did at Logurate. However, um, that's not to say there are other Bronze Age monuments in the area. So this is um, a standing stone and this is a cut mark stone and there are other examples of Bronze Age sites in the Logie Way area. So the finds we got aren't isolated and there was clearly a, a, a thriving Bronze Age population in and around Logie Way. Um, so the next feature we found um, during this is located right at the um, corner up here right next to the little B road. So there's a very narrow trench going up that way which is coming up the parallel of the B road and then there's the larger trench of the of the main new road coming down over the terraces. Um, and what we got here is what we think is a uh, middle Iron Age roundhouse. So you can see in plan here we've got some post holes that come around in a, in a rough circle. We have a near central feature 157 and then a huge um, pit 082 and the shallow ditch is much much later. Um, John is actually currently excavating this central feature 157 and what we think we've got here as I said is a probable Iron Age roundhouse um, very little material in these incredibly truncated we did get a middle Iron Age date from it but very much secondary um, charcoal we also got a middle Iron Age date from material from 082 which is actually much more interesting so this is the waste pit 082 and this is the central feature which has been interpreted on the vines as being a smelting furnace. Um, from this feature we got slag, we got pieces of vitrified slab ceramic and we got some uh, metallic residue as well. Um, Gemma Crookshanks, uh, NMS, who did the analysis on it, um, thinks that it's potentially that the smelting furnace was set up in a, an abandoned Iron Age roundhouse. Um, and the material that we got out of the pit is very similar, and it looks like this pit actually acted as the, the waste pit for the smelting furnace, which therefore may have been used for some considerable period of time. So I think, I can't remember the percentage now, but a large percentage of the material we got out from the whole site in terms of slag and metalworking was came from this this waste pit. So we've got evidence again, just a um, couple of features, but we've got evidence of um, Middle Iron Age occupation on um, the Logie Rate terraces, which few carbonized zero grains, evidence of metalworking. So it would suggest there's some kind of um, active um, settlement here during the Middle Iron Age. Again, this find isn't isolated. So for example, you've got the monumental roundhouses uh, that are known from this area, and this is one just up at um, Pit Lockery, um, Black Spout. So then we come on to the Pictish period uh, features. So the first um, Pictish material we're gonna talk about is a uh, buried soil. So this was found in area three, which is up here. So this is looking actually um, south eastwards down the slope. And you can see this material here, and it gets dark as we go down. This is quite a thin buried soil. And from in this buried soil, we've got um, charcoal, we've got fragments of burnt bone, we've got bits of metal, including nails, um, and we've got some bloom, um, a bloom fragment as well. So it looks like what we've got here is a soil that's um, had midden um, or domestic waste added deliberately added to it but includes material also of Pictish period metalworking as well so that's quite interesting you can see that the top soil the sorry the buried soil lo lies below at least a meter's worth of colluvium so this is hill wash that's come down after the Pictish period and actually sealed this um, this buried soil lies within potentially um, a field system. I'll talk about the ditches a bit more um, later on. But you can see this crop mark on the image here of a big ditch. Um, we've got other ditches. And so I think 
the current sort of interpretation is that there were fields, Pictish period um, fields, that were being actually farmed and um, enriched with manure during this period. At the um, end here um, of this buried soil, we've got this feature, which are a number of flagstones set flat on top of the uh, natural, um, and the buried soil um, had built up around them. There's no evidence of burning, so there's no sort of concentration of charcoal or anything, there's no evidence of post tools or any associated structures. So I don't think it's a hearth. Um, if it was part of a, a floor or of a structure, then that structure was very, very ephemeral. We've got nothing else surviving. Um, one of the other ideas maybe is it's a, just a start, so maybe storing, uh, you know, like a corn stew con or something like that. Um, but to be honest, we don't actually know what this feature was. So on the aerial photographs, there are, as I said before, numerous crop marks. Many of these seem to be linear ditch-like features. And we certainly got this in area one. So this is the southern area. Some of these were ditches were picked up by um, geophysics that had been done before um, Argyle Archaeology was involved in the project. And you can see from these images that the ditch well, the ditches are quite um, variable in form. Some are quite narrow, some are quite broad. Not particularly easy to spot. Um, mostly seem to be back filled with um, probably collapsed um, bank material. We did get a couple of Neolithic flints, so obviously secondary nature in these ditches. Um, but the fill of all the ditches we excavated in the radiocom that's come back as um, 8th, 9th century AD. So clearly picked dish. This more examples of ditches. So this image here, this is where the um, early Bronze Age cremation was located. And you can see this dark fill in here. This is actually set on the edge of that really steep terrace, that really steep slope going down onto the actual floodplain. And um, it narrows down this way, but it clearly is a ditch, but mo well, not most of it, but quite a large proportion, especially at this end, end has been lost to that really steep slope. Um, there, there was a commercial forest um, plantation on here. So there's been a lot of activity and a lot of machine movement in the past. Um, and a lot of it, I think, is washed away down slope. Coming down towards this area are these ditches here. So this is just coming down the slope here. And one went off to the um, east and one to the southwest, so running along the edge of the scarp. These ditches are fairly shallow. OK, there's been some plug truncation, but they're still relatively shallow and they're fairly U-shaped. So I don't think they're defensive in nature. I think they're just forming boundaries between different field systems. And you can see this one here is quite clearly going across the um, following the line of the upper edge of the terrace. So this is this ditch coming across here. And again, we've got 8th, 9th century um, date from the fill of this, from the lower fill of this, this ditch. So now on to the Pictish structural structures that we got. So we're now looking at this area here at the um, northwest end of area two. So just to the east of that um, roundhouse. So the roundhouse is in here. And then we've got this structure in here. Um, the WSI said that we only had to um, half section all the post holes, so we never fully excavated any post holes. So circles um, are partially um, extrapolated. And you can see I've got two versions of what this structure may have looked like. You can see there are lines, distinct lines of post holes. And we've got some that are really, really um, deep, like these ones are particularly deep post holes. Um, and then you've got other ones that are fairly shallow. Certainly the post holes, mostly this side are shallower than this side. But again, the slope is coming down this way. So these ones have been more plow truncated. So potentially you've actually got um, three post holes here that may have been the main supports for the, uh, say, a sort of pitched roof kind of um, affair with possibly um, timber being supporting an organic, some kind of organic walling around and then internal divisions or supports for another story. Um, this version, it may have been a similar idea, but again, uh, maybe internal supports for another story. 
we may have more than one structure here, but I think it's been surprising if that was the case because none of the post holes actually cut each other. And you would have thought if one structure replaced another, you'd at least get some intercutting of post holes, which you don't seem to get. In terms of the function of this structure, it's very, very unclear. Some of the posts clearly rotted in situ and the packing survives undisturbed stone packing. However, some of them have clearly been disturbed. So the post appears to have been pulled out, deliberately removed, probably be to recycled in another structure. And then these post holes have been filled with, um, which is basically organic kind of um, hearthways, occupation um, rubbish, really. So there's charcoal, um, uh, burnt seeds, there's little bits of residue of metalworking. We got one wet stone and one um, rubber stone. Um, and the rate of carbon dates come back as um, 7th to 8th century AD. Um, so again, it's Pictish, it's a Pictish period structure. It may have had some kind of turf walling on the exterior of it. No evidence of that, but again, cloud truncation has been huge. Um, so to look for parallels, really, um, not that many picture structures out with hill forts have ever been excavated. But obviously, we've got the uh, classic pit karmic um, type longhouse um, locally to um, locate up in the hills. So these are sort of longhouse structures, so quite different. Of interest is at Ryany, the enclosure there, and structure one especially is a uh, sub rectangular structure, post hole structure. Um, and this structure here is also postal structure, but with some kind of um, probably organic walling uh, around the exterior. Um, there's a similar kind of set um, structures at uh, Port Mahonic as well. Um, so again, further further work needs to be done on on these sort of um, non enclosed settlements to see 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 what sort of typically the structures were like. Of interest here as well is a. Uh, um, here we've got the ditched enclosure and the palisade on the outside. At Logie rate, you've got this um, looks like to be a ploughed out hill fort. It's a double ditched or triple ditched enclosure with an internal roundhouses. Now this has been interpreted um, as Iron Age. However, given Ryany um, and the dates from Ryany, it's very very possible. And given the context in Logie right now that we know there's pictish um, field system, there's pictish structures, potentially this structure could be pictish as well. Um, so that this field system, all these ditches and, and this enclosed site are all linked in some way. Um, so it's clearly there's um, a great sort of need here at Logie right to do more investigation and more research excavation to actually try and understand what's going on. In, in terms of the pictures, archaeology on the terrace. So just to the east of the pictures period structure, um, we've got some more post holes. So you can see here, possibly raised in a circle. They disappear under the bulk here down slope towards the scheduled area. And there's some more pits further in this area up here. And from these pits and post holes, again, we got um, occupation debris, including evidence of metalworking. Um, and we even got a ceramic chair, which, which would have been on the end of bellows um, used in metalworking. So what we're really getting at Logie Rate is this broad sort of idea of quite a big landscape um, split up into different fields that were clearly cultivated and manured. We're having structures. Um, that people presumably are living in, we're getting evidence of occupational deposits, and we're having metalworking um, going on at the same time. Um, this is quite unusual in that these sites we found at low grade are all um, unenclosed. So um, a contemporary site, for example, is um, to the south at Dunkeld of called King's Seat, which was recently ex excavated by AOC Archaeology. And they've interpreted that site as being an area of craft specialisation. So lots of metalworking was going on there. And there's evidence of trade with Anglo-Saxons and um, also further afield. Um, certainly at this time, Logie Rate was an important um, 
picture centre. We know there was um, a, a monastic or a religious site at Logirate um, in, during this period. And also within the churchyard, there are two um, Christian Pictish um, cross slabs. Um, so we need to look at this, these finds from Logirate within that context. Um, in that clearly Logirate was quite an important area of Pictish activity. So finally, um, the most recent finds we got were uh, medieval. So this is a medieval hearth, which we dated to the 13th, 14th century. Um, it's located just to the north of the roundhouse and it's a very small um, area that was excavated parallel to the road. It's associated with a couple of post holes and I think it's probably a structure, but most of which has either been destroyed by the road or is in the field adjacent. Um, we got some, elsewhere on site, we, um, got some imported Yorkshire type um, wares that also date to the 13th century and other fairly sort of um, nice pieces of medieval pottery. This site in here is the um, Wrath of Logirate, which is a 13th, 14th century castle site. Um, it's been speculated that it may be early and maybe uh, had foundations in the 12th century. So again, Logirate going into the um, medieval period was still a centre of um, importance. So really to summarise, um, as you can see, the area is filled with crop marks. However, the vast majority of features we found didn't show up as crop marks, which shows that I think that this area is stuffed full of um, buried archaeology. Um, and the potential here, I think, for further research into numerous periods, but especially the Pictish period, and understanding maybe um, set Pictish settlement out with um, fortified um, sites or potentially fortified sites. Um, I think there's a great potential for further research in this area. So finally, I just say, like to say thank you to the funders um, and particularly SLR Consulting Limited who employed me to do the watch and brief. Thanks to Rathmel Archaeology providing um, copies of their evaluation reports and geophysics reports. And thanks to Roddy and John for their assistance with fieldwork. <laughs>